It's our second yellow of the day. John Paul Jr. spun it quickly to make this yellow. The first yellow involved Buddy Lazier, who actually caught the wall coming off of turn three and is out of the race at this point. We're ready to go back to green flag racing as the pace car brings the field around, and we show you all 28 of the starters here today. Only one other time in the history of this track have there been 28 starters. And the first 24 in the field are all within the same second after qualifying. Well, I think I think that's the key to the number of cars in this race, Paul, is how close they are. Uh, these guys, these teams have all just learned a tremendous amount in the last year and have really closed the gap on each other. Nobody's got a big advantage now, and, and really that's what it's all about. That's what makes racing fun. Tyce Carlson driving for Jimmy Emke in and out of the pits. Of course, they've been struggling, obviously, with that car. He's uh, been the slowest car in the field since they've dropped the green flag, and they want to find out why and get him going again. Well, and I was mentioning the part that uh, when the car's off that much and you're in traffic, uh, you're trying to save your lap or your life every corner, and then by looking ahead, but also you got to be worried about traffic coming up from behind. So that's. Uh, Probably the worst feeling in racing is when you have to uh, look both directions at once and, and hold your breath at the same time. Well, with the spin, John Paul Jr., who drove around the track with the lift bar still attached to his car, John Paul lost one lap, so he's down a lap behind the leader of the race. Jeff Ward, the Tabasco car. Green on the lower side and wings as Chase now. Boy, take a look at Kenny, Kenny Brack. Brack as he comes Whoa. alongside Boat. Almost Whoa. a little too close. Boat gets around him. Wow, they had wheels locked up there. That could have been a lot of trouble for both those guys. Kenny Brack realized it and tried to get back out of there as best he could. And it's tough to do. That'll send you airborne as quick as can be. Still, Tony Stewart cannot outrun Jeff Ward. What a great job the young man is doing at the front of the field. Great motocross champion. Trying now to make his wheel with his way with four wheels under him. Well, he might be twice as fast with twice as many wheels on that thing, Paul. They all circle around. It pitches up your breath when you see him come around a car heading into the pits like we just did. Still Ward. Stewart three tenths back. Then vote Breck Salazar. Actually, Brian Tyler, who we saw down low heading for the pit, some kind of problem there. Eddie Cheever on the move, now up to sixth place after starting 20th. The first race here, Johnny Rutherford won $65.15. Today's winner will receive an excess of $125,000. complete we are under yellow the reason for it was an incident over in turn two that's Davey Hamilton's car he's actually the victim in this thing he was following JJ Yaley in the number 44 that green car and just suddenly a lazy spin it was lazy but it wasn't lazy in Davey's mind he just had nowhere to go he's already committed high this is the way it looked from on board. They head into one, Davey Hamilton chasing Yaley. Well, Yaley, you can see the car moving around just a little bit right there, and all of a sudden the car just jumped sideways. That had to surprise JJ. Poor Davey was looking for a place to go, and, and it wasn't there. And you know, if he'd gotten another few feet down the track, the wall disappears, and he would have been clear. So we're under yellow in the Duraloop 200. We'll return with more of this race after a message and a word from our ABC stations. Duralube 200 on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Duralube Engine Treatment. Tomorrow's technology today. True Value, official hardware store of IRL and garages everywhere. Tagamet HB 200. Don't lose sleep over heartburn. Tagamet. And over 40,000 parts and accessories. Tires and service too. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Under yellow. Let's take a look at what's happened thus far on the 10th lap. Buddy Lazier caught the wall, and he was fortunately not injured, but when his engine let go, was out of the race. Then the lead chain. Jeff Ward on the left. Tony Stewart on the right as Stewart powers under him. Ward fell further back when he was attacked by Billy Boat as well. Then on the 32nd lap, 
Mark Dismore tapped to the wall in across the grass. They're going to put him back in the car. He's going to get back into the fight. And then on the 46th lap, Davey Hamilton was following J.J. Yaley. Yaley spun. Hamilton caught the wall. Different look at the same thing, Tom. Well, this is from Goodyear's point of view. Uh, Yaley gets sideways. Davey has no place to go. Now we got debris. Watch, watch this tire. thing, the tire coming across with a half shaft in it. I'll guarantee you the driver's eyes are closed right there. Boy, that is a terrifying moment for Scott Goodyear. Let's go to Gary Gerald. And one of the victims of that incident, a flying wheel caught the left front suspension for Robbie Buell. Significant damage. It got into the side pod, the side plate on the front wing, and all the suspension. They're trying to replace it, but he's been here a long time. Jack? Well, Gary, Jimmy Kite is having problems, not with his engine, with his brakes. They've lost them. They brought him back in, and now what they're doing is filling, filling brake fluid on board, bleeding the brakes, and they're going to send them back out. A well, one-mile oval, guys, you need brakes. Well, not only brakes, but the traffic that these guys are experiencing, uh, you got to have brakes, and you can't be competitive without them. There's the official order after 54 laps. But as they come back to the green flag, it will be Billy Boat out in front, and then another car, and then Eddie Cheever. Now, neither one of those two cars have made pit stops. They're expected, really, in another 19, 20 laps that they will do that. Then two other cars, Mike Groff, Paul Durant, and finally third place, Raul Boisel. That's how they come to the green. Billy Boat, that dark green car. Well, they're actually Later behind the Tice Carlson there, who was uh, at the end of that lap, so it's going to be tough to get by traffic at that situation. Eddie Cheever. Boat still trying to clear traffic as Cheever comes to the inside. Oh, what a nice move for Eddie. Sorting the traffic, just like you said, and Cheever takes the lead. Four, five wide back there, coming down the front straightaway, Paul. So Cheever, Boat, Bozell. And then anybody's guess. Well, this is some fun stuff. How about Cheever coming from as far back as he's come to lead this race? Uh, pit stops or no pit stops, he's done most of it on the racetrack. How much of a difference as we watch Tony Stewart here as he comes up on Tyce Carlson, he's that bright yellow car on the inside to the right of your screen, just went over the oil dry and picked up a little puff of smoke. Well, Stefan Gregoire right there too, looking for racing room, trying to get around Tyce Carlson. Well, another good story, Greg Waugh started way back, and he's up to four spot with some trouble in the pit earlier. Back to Cheever. Tom, the fact that he has not stopped, besides giving him track position, what about the weight of the car compared to somebody who just did? Well, the weight's lighter. In fact, we heard on the radio, Billy Boat, we got trouble coming off of two. Big in trouble. Fact, big trouble down. coming off of two. Oh, my goodness, Ari Lyondike. Lyondike. Flips the car upside down. You can see him He's moving, moving around, though. That car was sliding upside down, but his oh. head wasn't on the surface. Look Car at him, still working on the wheel. He's talking on the radio. He picks the steering wheel up <laughs> so he can talk on the radio. I wonder if there's an antenna hooked up to that. Be very careful, Ari, when you pull the seat belts loose, please. Well, that's always it's a good sign, run. obviously. Steel, the, the other one in that incident. Car 22 in turn three. Well, they've got him right side up now, so they they got a better chance to get him out of the car now. Looks he's, like he's okay. Yeah, it really does. That's great. So Dave Steele, the 22 car, was the other car that you saw sitting down in turn three. It was fun to see him hop out. Uh, obviously, there's uh, not much trouble with Larry right now. Look at his helmet. Look at his helmet. You know, that puts me in mind of Johnny Rutherford here, 1980. Got upside down on the front stretch, and all he could say was, I was just wondering how thick the helmet was because I could feel it scraping. Well, one thing about race drivers, one of their harder spots in their bodies is their heads.
Here we see it. Uh, Steele looks like just jumped sideways. Leyendijk had no place to go again. But again, these cars are just jumping sideways coming off of turn two. Look at the out, the right side tires. Still have a lot of momentum. You can see Ari moving around. He throws the wheel out. That helmet is amazing. Good Talk news about is production. There was no burnt spots on the balaclava, so that's always a good sign. Well, Herm Johnson paints the helmets for Ari, and a major paint job coming up. We'll be back. We're under yellow in the Duraloop 200, the Indy Racing League at Phoenix International Raceway. Here's why. That car right there, David Steele, on the far right-hand side of your screen, is the car that starts this problem. The car's going to jump sideways. You see it jumping sideways. No, they have no place to go. They try to go on the outside. One car spins in front of Lion Dyke, and then Lion Dyke is up over a wheel and on top at this point. It was Sam Schmidt, the 99 car, that yellow and red car that was down in and spinning as well. And it's scraped right on his helmet. Now, they're still working on that. By the way, Roberto Guerrero pulled off after the restart, and we'll check on that as well. Jack Aroot? Well, Paul, Roberto Guerrero drove by us on a, on a dead toe. He was still in the cockpit of the car, so we'll check on that. But J.J. Yaley, who finished first at Manzanita last night, not going to do that today, along with Davey Hamilton. First, Davey, what happened? Yeah, we just uh, running hard. Actually, I broke fifth gear right off on that restart, and I fell back three or four spots. and. I still had six, so he put in six and was coming back through there. And, uh, you know, J.J. just got, got away from him and nowhere to go. Just got pit between the wall and him, and, you know, that's racing. But we'll be back. J.J., did it sneak up on you, or just how did it transpire? Well, uh, you know, there at the beginning of the race, we had a pretty bad push. And, you know, they told me just ride it out and not to, you know, do any foolish moves. And, uh, you know, I caught up to the guys in front of me there, and they kind of crossed over a little bit. And I don't know if that got the car loose or not. But, you know, it's very unfortunate for Quaker State in one call. And, uh, you know, John Menard and Jeff Sinn giving me the chance. And, uh, you know, we'll just put it back together and give it a shot here at Indy. He signed as a research and development driver for John Menard. This face could be in Tony Stewart's seat next year. Guys? No. No question about it. You can consider that Tony Stewart is heading off to uh, a ride in NASCAR next year, a full-time ride. That may be his replacement at Menard. We'll be back. Billy Boat comes in for fuel just as scheduled. Gary? Well, they held him off as late as possible. The reason being, they think they're well into the window now where they can hopefully make this a two-stop race. The early leaders won't be able to do so. He's rolling right around 14 seconds. The stop on lap 67. Now, the aerial shots here today provided by the Goodyear Blimp Eagle based in Carson, California. Recently, Goodyear doubled its Blimp fleet to six. Two airships being added in Europe one in South America. Don't forget tonight on ABC, the network premiere featuring Alfalfa, Spanky, Darla, and the whole gang, you bet. It's the Little Rascals, followed by the world premiere of Blood on Her Hands, starring Susan Lucci. That's all tonight here on ABC. Now the leader is Tony Stewart. Jack Aroot? Well, Eliseo Salazar was involved with that accident with Lion Dyke. What happened? Well, um, uh, exiting one and two, you know, I got loose. There was a lot of car. I don't know if somebody touched me. I have to see the replay. And then, you know, uh, Ari collected me when I was going towards the wall at the side too. Um, yes, it was, like, the track was very, very loose. I mean, I, my car was completely loose, and I guess everybody was. Paul? Well, it appeared that there was another car in there, and that really clarifies that situation. Four of the five cautions have all been over in turn two, the only exception being Lazier between three and four. As we come back to the green, it'll be John Paul in front of the field, that black car, back into the action. Then Tony Stewart, second place, the blue car, Stefan Gregoire right behind him. Then Buell, a lap down, and the third place, Aurel Boisel. Kenny Brack underneath the Buell car there. Brack in third. Report on Roberto Guerrero, a gearbox problem. He is out of the race. Kenny Breck, the 14 power team car, driving for AJ and closing on second place. You can see a little oil dry down in the corner. That's tough to run through the first time. You're not sure if that track's going to hold you or not. There's Scott Sharp. He battles with Boisel. 
This is inside Sharp's car again. Coming off of turn two here, Paul. All right, they're heading into turn three here. You can hear him roll out of the throttle a little bit, but he's able to pick it up about in the apex and drive it on off the corner down the front straightaway here. Traffic ahead. Again, rolling out, probably touching the brakes a little bit as he enters turn one and two. And then he's just trying to get after the throttle on the exit of two as quick as he can. His target is Jeff Ward. Just ahead of him. I think his target is between the fences, Paul, and <laughs> Ward's in his way. <laughs> There's Scott Sharp. That's Jeff Ward as he goes into turn one again. Well, he's catching this group. He's not catching them very fast, and that's going to make it a little more difficult to get by when he does get to them. down on the inside didn't quite have enough to make the, the pass there and that is not a move for position with Jeff Ward he's simply trying to get around some and I say it in quotes slower cars well in this case it's fuel yeah he's not had his misfortunes and right. it's certainly a car that can run up with the front anytime exactly not a slower car but a car that's had trouble early and now Sharp takes a move. So Sharp on the run now. Stewart, Gregoire, Breck, then Sharp. Scott's having similar, similar problems with uh, Buell as well. Well, it's a good battle here. All four of those cars right there together are very similar in speed right now. That's one of the things I like about racing on ovals. There's a car in the middle of that, not for position, but it's still part of the fight, and it makes for some great racing. John Paul Jr. in the black car sits just ahead of them. He's very quick. This is the fight for second. Well, Kenny Breck has just caught Gregoire and is trying to put a little pressure on him. But how about Gregoire? This guy started way back. Not a whole lot of money. He'll big question marks for sponsors on the side of that thing. The white and orange car, that of course is Breck, the blue car with the question mark, saying, hey guys, we perform great. We're going to the Indy 500. Somebody surely wants to paint their name on there. I don't know what these guys do, but always in the race, this thing goes towards the front. Well, I think a lot of that, besides the obvious skill of Greg Waugh, is Daryl Soppy, who has put many great efforts together as a chief mechanic team manager. Daryl's been along, around a long time. Worked with Mario Andretti, worked with oh, the Minsky oh, team. Oh, it looks like Gregoire's going to get caught up behind traffic. No, he doesn't. He was able to clear it. Did a nice job there. And Breck decides the inside line's a place to be. Breck Car right. slowing, going into turn three. It looks to be Jeff Ward. It is Jeff Ward, slowing down. And there is Ward. A sudden slow. I wonder if it's an engine. Remember, there have been engine bearing problems. They got a lot of bad bearings. They don't, a lot meaning not a whole bunch, but a group of bad bearings, and they're not sure what teams ended up with them. You imagine how that makes the engine builders feel. Well, I know everybody in the DePasco crew is real hot right now. Tony Stewart, the leader, is only about two seconds out in front of Greg Waugh. Here he comes through the field as with Ken Breck right behind him. They work around Mark Dismore back in the car after being off the course. That's the distance all the way up to the leader. There goes Stewart. Here comes the fight for second place. That blue car is second. And the white and orange car behind him is third place Kenny Breck. Scott Whoa, Sharp. Whoa, Greg Waugh. way up there. Tice Carlson had him going on both sides of him. Uh, that's not fun for a lap traffic. And that gives it over to Kenny Breck to move into second place. Now we'd like to pause for five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. At Phoenix International, the leader is Tony Stewart. The battle is at second place. Kenny Breck 
and Stefan Gregoire have been battling for second. Scott Sharp is sitting in the fourth place and Scott Goodyear is sit currently in fifth. That's Scott Sharp. He's back some distance. He has ground to make up. Well, it doesn't take long to make up ground at Phoenix International, especially if he can get some of the leaders in front of him in some traffic situations. 84 laps, now 85. 85 miles complete on the mile in the desert. there as well as they battle their way through they're trying to catch up with Scott Goodyear oh well they almost put Cheever into the wall there's great battles all around this racetrack right now Paul it's, we just can't keep up with them all you know I think that battle for seventh is probably the best one on the circuit right now and Cheever is right in the middle of it there he goes here comes boat there comes Goodyear that's Buzz Calkins right behind Goodyear in the red car number 12 this is inside Goodyear's car right there. On board Goodyear. You can hear that engine noise from the in-car Camry. He wants to get back after that throttle on the exit of two, but it just won't accept it, so he's got to feather it a little bit. So Billy Boat. And there's Stewart. There's Boat. Leading that battle for uh, sixth place. Look at this on the moving up. Both 11th to 6. Dismore, after having trouble, 22nd up to 18th. Tony Stewart, while everybody else is battling, has it pretty easy right now. He's five seconds ahead of second place, Kenny Breck. We'll return with more of the Duraloop 200 after this message and a word from our ABC station. Watching Auto Racing on ABC Sports. Back at Phoenix International Raceway, Tony Stewart. He's running this race Stewart style, which means that he's carving his way now up through the field. He just got around Scott Goodyear, and Goodyear was in seventh place. Jack Aroot. Well, you're trying to scrub off speed upside down. This is what it does to a helmet. You're upside down, and you're holding on for dear life. That's what it does when the pavement hits your right hand. Ari Leyendijk, that was close. Well, it was a hell of a ride. I thought I'd cleared uh, Salazar coming out of two, but just, you know, clipped in with the left rear because he was coming up towards me and just you know threw the car off the side and I went upside down for the, for a wild ride. Uh, my hand uh, just scraped the track so that that hurts a little bit but other than that I'm fine. And you had the wherewithal afterwards to radio into the crew. You grabbed the steering wheel. That amazes me. I was radioing them in while I was going upside down that I was okay because uh, it seemed all slow motion to me. I could see this sparks flying off the car and I could see the tarmac underneath me going by. And the seat belts held me in really good, so everything worked fine. And just before I came to the stop, I was telling them on the radio, everything's okay. Paul, who says these guys aren't athletes? You know what I think's interesting is Ari Leyendijk collects helmets of all the drivers. And he and I were talking, he's got a little museum in his garage at his house out here in Scottsdale. And I wanted to trade a helmet with him. You may want this guy's too, Tony Stewart. He's now gone around Eddie Cheever, put him a lap down. Cheever was in sixth. Billy Boat in the 11 car just ahead of him now is the next car that he's planning on putting a lap down. Remember Stewart last stop though on the 48th lap for fuel and we now are on lap 101 just past the halfway point here at Phoenix. And by the way for next week next Saturday racing kart action from halfway around the world when we bring you the Budweiser 500k from Japan. Michael Andretti will he be able to make it two in a row. The boat certainly knows he's there. You saw Jeff Ward slow down, pull off earlier. Gary, what's the story? According to Mitch Davis, Paul, they believe that they've blown six gear, so they've gone down to fifth. They basically have to put it in the cruise mode. They hope to stay out there, but they clearly can't run at pace with the other guys. Very disappointing break for the guy who started on the pole. 
and with a spectacular run in the early going. There he is, the uh, 35 car. Tom, fifth to six really is only about one tooth different here, isn't it? Well, a lot of times it is, but uh, what surprised me did, that, that uh, Jeff didn't catch it any sooner because he almost slowed to a stop and then realized, hey, maybe I ought to try something else. The thing's back up to speed. He's not that far off the pace. It's just he lost uh, quite a bit of time before he realized he had other selections. He's not far at all. He currently runs in 10th. Stewart puts Billy Bodle lap down. So now Stewart style comes. Nope, sorry. He's still got him to go. It comes by Ray. Actually, Billy stepped up the pace. Yeah, uh, actually, he sure has. Stewart was uh, close, and we got a yellow spin. Well, that will save Billy Boat for the moment. The spin is Paul Durant. And that's a car brand new team. Car 23. Look at that car. You don't quite know what, what color to call it. is for the most part raw carbon fiber exposed. Car one, turn one. Yeah, that's uh, that's getting your act together to real late in the day, I would say. It's closed. So race control tells everybody up and down pit row that the pits are closed until the pace car gathers up the field. And as the safety equipment goes out to handle up the situation after Paul Durant got sideways. Duraloop 200 on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Duraloop Engine Treatment. Tomorrow's technology today. Goodyear, innovators of run-flat technology. Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile dealers. And Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Back at Phoenix International, taking advantage of the yellow, Kenny Breck, the 14 car, came in. Also, Tony Stewart, they were 1-2. And Stefan Gregoire came in. Now, those cars all pitted on the 48th lap. You would also expect Scott Sharp would be in the pits as well very quickly. Billy Boat, on the other hand, was able to move up and catch up to the back of the field just before he was going to go down to the leader of the race, that number one car of Tony Stewart. There is... Billy Boat. Now, you can get up to speed on all the facts of all auto racing. Jack Aroot and I both right for, and we invite you to join us on America Online, AOL, keyword ABC Sports. And then visually, well, how about RPM tonight? Television's first daily program devoted to racing. So at Phoenix International, it's been wild and woolly. We've had more than our share of yellows. Fortunately, the cars have been very, very strong. And we don't have any injuries, despite the fact, our serious injuries, despite the fact that Ari Leyendijk, the reigning Indy champion, got upside down, scraped along the track, including in that scrapage was his hand. Yeah, very fortunate there. But, uh, you know, this tight traffic situation, somebody gets in trouble, and that's a negative of close racing is that uh, you have a lot of exposure to, to things that cause uh, that, that are caused by other people. All right, so they continue to work under yellow, 110 laps complete. Now, to many of you, there may be a familiar face over at the Panther Racing Team, and it's driver Scott Goodyear. Here's Jack Aru. Jim Harbaugh has experienced athletic competition at the highest level as quarterback for the NFL's Indianapolis Colts. An off-season trade sends him to the Baltimore Ravens, but the Ravens aren't his only new team. Harbaugh is now a part owner of an IRL entry, and he knows that this can be a contact sport for his driver, Scott Goodyear. No, they're just going to the wall 200 miles an hour, so that's, that's not near as bad as getting hit by a linebacker, of course, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's more life and death out here. They're going to talk to me like I'm a fourth grader. I want to learn everything about it, you know, the engine, you know, how it works, strategy. Uh, so just do a lot of watching, listening, and, and trying to pick, be a sponge for knowledge. He's out there laying it on the line. I mean, and, uh, you know, I can relate to that. I, I mean, I can't relate to going, uh, getting in a car and going around 200 miles an hour, you know, uh, wheel to wheel with another guy. But I, I can relate. 
taking risks. Everything's good. No problem. Well, Jim Harbaugh, how's the learning process today? It's going good. Uh, right now, they think they got the car running the bestest run all day, uh, about the halfway point there. Scott thinks it's dialed in. We're behind uh, Tony. Almost got him on that last pit stop. The guys did a great job. Now, I want to know, when are we going to see Jim Harbaugh in an IRL car? I really have no desire to get in it. I mean, we got a great driver in Scott, and uh, taking it into the wall, it costs too much money. Well, guys, I want to show you something. You know, he played for the Indianapolis Colts for so long. They used to have Colts helmets here. But look behind Jim. Check the Fueler's helmet. Didn't take long to change now that he's a quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, well, we're still under yellow. There is the driver, Scott Goodyear, who drives for the Panther team. Now, the reason for the yellow, we suggested maybe Paul Durant might have spun. Well, not so at all. Uh, what he did was lose an engine. Now, when one of those goes, that's... That's oil and water coming out of the well, car. That, that was a lot of debris coming out of the back of that car. You can see on the screen here on the in-car camera, the moisture, a lot of water, but there was also oil in there to make that kind of smoke. And of course, not so much what comes up on the visor, but what gets underneath your wheels when that happens. Because when it lets go, it usually takes the car that has the engine going and anybody who's pursuing closely behind. So Stewart, he will be the leader as we come back to the green flag. Kenny Breck is in second, followed by Gregoire, Sharp, Boat, Cheever, Calkins. Boat still on the lead lap, top five still on the lead. 113 laps will be complete as we come to the green. What's interesting is three of the guys on the lead lap are actually going to lead this group down to the green flag. They're at the tail end of the lead of the of the lead lap. Stewart's caught back seven or eight spots, so it'll be interesting to see if they can hold him off and uh, maintain that lap and, and maybe get another yellow to help him later in this race. And there are six slower cars in front of Tony Stewart that he will have to immediately handle up. Well, we're not sure they're slower yet, Paul. There's some well, quick guys up there. They've, they've just struggled. Good point. One of them being Cheever up there. Green, here we go. Sam Schmidt, that yellow car down on the inside, made a good restart. He's trying to keep from going a lap down. Three cars behind Stewart. Kenny Breck will try to get into the fight. Watch for him in the 14 car. He's closing in quickly past the first of those cars. Well, there's Goodyear. He's stuck in traffic. You listen to him. He had to get out of the throttle looking for a way around. I'll tell you who else is flying in this. Look at Robbie Buell. Look at that blue car, the front of the two Buell cars. As he's worked in and in front of the two blue cars, as he's widened in and out, got in front of Stefan Gregoire. Remember, he's still a lap down, but boy, he's driving like crazy. Well, this is out the back of Goodyear's car. Kenny Breck is just all over him. Uh, Scott's been being slowed up a little bit. Buell on the outside, a lap down or so, but the car is working real well. Yeah, Buell's actually 16th, not down a lap or so, down 13. What's going with Greg Waugh there? Well, Breck just got underneath uh, Goodyear right there. A good move. Uh, Kenny Breck is going towards the front. Well, he's currently oh. running in second place. Greg Waugh keeps running this high line. How does he do that? I don't. I think he's, he's got to have his eyes shut because uh, he's stirring up a lot of stuff up there. He's uh, dusting it off that high groove. You guys ahead remember of him. we were talking about Kenny Breck having a push condition? Well, during that last pit stop, Dami LeMans and the AJ Foyt team said, we're not going to make any changes. Guess what? The push is gone. Don't you love AJ? So instinctive. Breck alone now. He's handled up Buell. But what? Buell sure put on a show. Now they say that they're concerned about debris. And they've gone yellow. What was interesting that Brick... Hold up, Ray. Don't go yet. No, no. Car closed, your last car. Car one, turn one. You got him, Pace Car. Pace Car, take him low on the front straightaway. Pace Car, low on the front straightaway. Mel Harder, the voice of race control. Cheever and Calkins both made up their lap, as we show you the fastest laps thus far of the day. 
No surprise on Stewart. Look at Boat. Twenty-three laps complete. The Indy Racing League at the Dura Loop 200. That's the way they line up as we're back to Green Flag Racing. And Kenny Breck is closing on Tony Stewart. Then there's a four-car separation of slower cars. Back to third place, Stefan Gregoire. Billy Boat is fourth. Scott Sharp is fifth. There's that battle, first, second place, as they flash across the line. It was real interesting. Last pit stop, we talked about... Uh, AJ's team not making the adjustment to Breck, but we did see the fact that uh, Tony Stewart did do adjustments to the front wing. They added a lot of front wing. This is a fight for third. Billy Boat moving on Stefan Gregoire. And Tom and gets him. Go ahead. To follow up on that, Larry Curry said, we, we need more wing. We're trying to put it in on that last stop. They think that the car is good, but we see worry lines, lines on the concern of the faces down here. They see how quickly Breck has closed it up. We got a great battle shaping up now as they'll soon be hitting traffic. And again, Stefan Gregoire goes way high, but keeps the car under control. Boat now to third. Breck still working on Stewart, though Stewart recognized it and pulled out about two tenths on him. Now Boat with Robbie Buell in front of him. Again, Buell not a player. He's 13 laps behind, but keeping out there and it, keeping plenty fast. AJ thinks he's a player right now. Uh, he wants Billy to get by clean and go towards the front. Boat's running good, but so is Buell. And Buell is the kind of guy, though, that recognizing that the lead battle might be right behind him will eventually decide to let him through. He's been open in the inside to him for the past couple of turns. Well, they're all racers, Paul, and uh, if they've got a chance to, to run hard, they're going to do that. Back at the front of the field, look at this. Breck is now closed to within 100 yards of Stewart. Stewart's having to handle the traffic. Breck, that white and orange, number 14. There's Stewart, number one. The reigning champion, the Glidden car. And Breck around traffic, back in contact with the leader. separating them. He's been as close as two tenths. He's actually fallen back a bit. Yeah, a lot of that's traffic, Paul. Who gets through the cleanest? We talked about it earlier. If you catch him on the straightaway, it's not going to slow you up, but a lot of times you're going to catch him in the corner and you got to roll out of that throttle. And I know from time to time we'll put that at the line computation in, and sometimes on a mile oval, oh! You got trouble. Yellow again. On turn two again, it's John Paul. Oh! Well, John Paul catches the wall off of two. Every incident today, save one, has been off of two. Well, this John Paul's okay. A lot of damage to the car. Yeah, and that second contact is a lot of times the problem. Car one is at the start finish line. Car ten will be your last car, pace car. All right, pace car. There's Stewart, the leader. Well, we saw in John Paul's situation, he clipped the outside at turn two. There's a Buzz. He looks like he's got some debris damage there that's going to affect the handling of that car. But what I was trying to get to, John Paul made that second contact after the right side wheels were gone. And that's when a driver is really exposed because there's nothing there to absorb the energy. Again, what? Buzz, the front wing. Just peeled the upper element of that wing right up. Well, there's John Paul. The thing just jumps sideways hard and backs into the wall terribly. Now, I don't know. I don't think he's trying to get out of the way. There's nothing left on the right side. But now watch this contact. Now, that's what can be tough because there's nothing left there to absorb energy. John Paul Jr., he's fine, goes to the ambulance. That's mandatory. And there's the question mark, the Bradley car, Buzz Calkins, with that element gone. And Billy Boat comes into the pits, and he comes in in third place, but still very definitely 
a factor in this race. Scott Sharp comes in. He's the fifth place car. Well, these yellows give these guys opportunity to make further adjustments to these cars to try to close the gap from the leader. The damage to Buzz Calkins' car. They can change that nose pretty quickly, and they are under yellow. Boat rolls. The crews wisely taking their time during the yellow. Sharp rolls out. And the Buzz Calkins crew goes to work on the nose of his car. It's going to be a modular change. We'll return with more after this message and a word from our ABC stations. ABC's Wide World of Sports studio in New York. Here's Robin Roberts. We will have more of the Duraloop 200 in just a moment. The yellow caused by John Paul. Tony Stewart, though, is still in the lead. Let's bring up the speed on what's happening on the NASCAR circuit today. The Trans South 400 at Darlington. A duel to the finish between Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon here on the final lap. And Jarrett holds off Gordon to take his second straight win at the Trans South 400, his first win of the year. Jarrett first, followed by Gordon. Rusty Wallace third. Jeremy Mayfield, followed by Jeff Burton and Terry Labonte. Don't forget, next Saturday here on ABC Sports, 2 Eastern, 3 Pacific, it's card action from halfway around the world when we bring you the Budweiser 500 from Japan. Miami Grand Prix winner Michael Andretti will be revving up for another win against Greg Moore and Alex Zanardi. That's all next Saturday right here on ABC Sports. we got some college hoops for you as well. Two teams trying to fight on to the men's Final Four. In the first game, it was Rhode Island losing to Stanford. They led the majority of the game. In fact, Stanford outscored Rhode Island 14 to 6 in the final minute. So Stanford goes on to the Final Four for the first time since 1942. Arthur Lee with 26 points for the Cardinal. Right now, Kentucky is battling Duke. And Duke is leading by 14, 38 to 24. This is the South Regional Final. Remember what happened in the East Regional Final between these two in 92. It went down to OT with Christian Leitner hitting that shot at the buzzer. We will keep you updated on what's going on there. Bulls and Raptors. The Raptors down 14. They come back to tie until MJ. Michael Jordan at the buzzer. Yet again in crunch time. He comes through. And the Bulls hang on for the victory over Toronto. 102 to 100. Jordan with 33 points. Pippen had 33 as well for the Chicago Bulls. Now back to the Duraloop 200. Paul Page at Phoenix International Raceway. Very expensive little parking lot down there. Some of the cars that have been involved in crashes today. We're still under yellow. At least the onboard camera still works on one of them. Tomorrow night, Oscar night on ABC with an all new Barbara Walters special featuring Will Smith and Oscar nominees Burt Reynolds and Kim Basinger. But and Billy Crystal is ready to host Hollywood's biggest night, the Oscars. Let's go to Jack. Well, Paul, we've come across a big story that's going to unfold later this week. You know, Aurora is the engine of choice here. No Nissans in the field. Nissan continues to develop. But well, we've uncovered a story that Nissan has signed McCormick Motorsports and Raul Boisel as their official research and development car for the rest of the season. The other rumor that we've heard that we're chasing down, and we think it's fairly true, Fred Treadway, that's right, the defending Indy 500 championship team may field a second car at the Indy 500 with Infinity Power. Boy, that's a major development for Infinity. They have been working very hard to try to catch up to the Oldsmobile Aurora. Restart. Brett got a good run there on the inside. Oh, uh, Brett made the move that counted. He got to the inside, kept in contact now with the race leader, Tony Stewart. Battles at the front of the field, 140 laps complete. Just 60 miles to go now. Billy Boat was in, topped off. He sits in third. We actually, third in line right now is Jeff Ward. He's running real good. He might be able to get a lap back and be a contender yet, Paul. I'll tell you what, despite his gearbox problems, Jeff Ward has been moving steadily forward. He's now in sixth place. One lap behind the leaders. on the move as we continue to watch the battle for this lead. He just got around Billy Boat. And so Scott Sharp is now third. Gary Gerald. Paul, it's very interesting about the situation for race leader Tony Stewart. They elected to stay out during the last yellow. They were trying to decide, should we
we come in and top off? Should we gamble that we'll get another opportunity? They've elected to gamble, but it seems clear they will have to stop for a final load of fuel. That could be a great advantage for Billy Boat, and it could help Jeff Ward get himself on lap. Jack? Well, Gary, it will not be a big help for Kenny Breck, however, because talking to Tommy LeMays and the power team, Pits. He says, I think we're going to have to come in and give Breck a splash and go of about four gallons near the end of the race. The other thing that Breck has noticed is that if, when he chases Tony Stewart down, Stewart is on the red limit. Now, for Kenny Breck and this team, that's kind of like using the whip for the thoroughbred. That's really heightened their emotions, and they've told Kenny Breck, go ahead, chase him down, because we're going to have to pit anyway. Guys? Stewart leads, Breck seven tenths back. There's that interval. There's Stewart. Kenny Breck right in pursuit. Kenny Breck from Sweden. Nice young man. Stefan Gregoire has been running in fifth place. And Roberto Guerrero doesn't hold a candle to Gregoire's line on this track. Well, he's dusted off some unexplored territory out there. It's been fun to watch him come through traffic. Uh, it's uh, pretty exciting to watch this kid, this foreigner. I don't think he knows where the groove is here, but he's getting around the racetrack in a hurry. He climbs high, low. More often than not, he's high, right up close to the wall and throwing up dust. Well, That's Sam Smith just in front of him. Well, actually, Sam's doing a good job out there, uh, but Greg Waugh has been able to go high, low. Now here's the pass underneath. Uh, doing a good job trying to come to the front representation of one of the small teams as we go back to the front. And again, what the IRL has been looking for is to boost up these smaller teams and get them competitive. That's exactly what's happening. Nice level playing field. Stewart now dealing with traffic again. Well, no problem there. Tice gave him some room to get underneath. But here's Jimmy Kite, Kite that there. had trouble earlier. And he knows he's there. He ain't gonna fight with him. Looking back now for Kenny Breck. There he comes. 1.2 back. And Breck, there he is. Now he has to handle up Jimmy Kite to get back in touch with the leader. Well, and really, you don't realize how hard Breck's working. Probably harder than the leader. The leader's just cruising, but Breck's trying to close, close the gap. So he's on the rev limiter, on the very edge of control in each quarter. So Stewart, still the leader. Four times the winner of this race has gone on to win the Indy 500. Boyd, Bobby Unser, and Al Unser twice. What will happen this year? As you take a look down on the mile in the desert, the race summary, summary right now, it's Tony Stewart. Average speed of the race. Now, remember, that is both green flag racing and yellow. Well, with all the yellows, it's down at 99 miles an hour. Four different leaders, five different lead changes, and we are moving at the 158th lap to what should be a fascinating finish. There are some tactics yet to be played. Stewart caught in traffic real bad there. Watch, uh, Breck's going to close the gap substantially right here. Well, he closed right in. Tice Carlson sits between Stewart and Breck. Now Breck's around Tice, and he's in contact with the leader. And the leader's got traffic troubles ahead. That's that timing we talked about earlier. Where you catch the traffic really can be serious. In that case, the loser was Breck as he got in behind Buzz Calkins. He was the winner a lap previous, and he lost a little there. Three tenths at the line last time around. And Breck is back. One and one tenth. Stewart still has to come in. Splash for fuel. Same thing for Breck. But the third place car, Scott Sharp, has fuel and should be able to make it to the end, as can Billy Boat and Greg Waugh. First and second come through the screen, watching for Sharp now. There goes Sharp. There he is, just crossing the line. Now, is that enough distance for the leaders to get in and out of the pits without him taking the lead? Oh, yeah. 
this racetrack, that's plenty enough distance. Uh, you can almost lose a lap here under uh, a green flag uh, pit stop. And then with speed limits, of course, now become the mandated order of all racing. The speed limit here is 60 miles an hour on the pit road. Yeah, the thing here, though, Paul, if they do have to stop, it's going to be a short stop. They don't have to put uh, a whole lot of fuel in that car. Now, whether they need tires or not, that's something else. There's Billy Goat right behind Sharp. This is now a battle. Well, look at the both traffic wide. here. They're both looking for ways around this situation. Oh, so tight in there. Sharp that's underneath. Sharp low. Boat gets caught out. Sharp come off of that corner. Well, Billy loses the air off the front end of the car, and that's why he can't get after the throttle as quick on that exit in that passing situation. Looks like Sharp might have also gotten a little toe from Moselle, too. Again, this is the battle between Scott Sharp and Billy Boat. Right now, it's a battle for third. But depending on what happens with the lead, this could determine the outcome of this race. Now, what about Sharp, Boat, Gregoire, those guys? Jack, are they going to have to come in for fuel? Stefan Gregoire, the latest from them is they think they might. Scott Sharp, definitely not. That's what we were told by the crew. Also, for Eddie Cheever, he had a bad set of tires. They were out of balance, and that is what dropped him back off the pace. Dropped him back to 11. I don't know if you saw that in-car, Billy Boat following Sharp into the corner. He got a big run on him into the corner. The thing wobbled right at the apex. He couldn't jump back after the throttle, and, uh, and Sharp was able to pull another car length or so ahead. Boy, Sharp right now looks like the strength on the track. We yellow got, just we came got off, yellow up and off a two. That's Sam Smith. He's been running a great race up to this point. So 169 is the ninth yellow of the day. No contact with the wall. He can bring it around. Assume that the tires are flattened. I was going to say that Scott Sharp might be sitting in the key position right now, though. Well, we'll see here in a minute what's going to happen to this yellow. Who's going to stop? Who's going to come in? No and who's contact. not? Car 99 spin, but no contact. Copy. There's Sammy right in the middle, a 360, and he catches it pretty good, and nobody misses, I mean, everybody misses him. Oh, but he did get the attention of everyone else. Now, we do expect Stewart's Kenny in. Breck to come in. Tony Stewart is on the pit lane right now. There he is, that's Kenny Breck right behind him. Marco Greco is the third car in that lineup, not a factor in the fight at the front. Stewart goes by our position, which is right where Kenny Breck comes to a stop. Fuel only. Watch the fuel in the vent man, right behind the driver's head. One, two, three. Breck wants to go. They want to make sure they've got enough. They hold him. This is long. Gary, he's away. One turn for Stewart. They've changed the handling. He gets away first. Here comes Breck right behind him. But remember, Scott Sharp, Greg Waugh, they've stayed out there. They shake it up now for the sprint to the finish. Stewart and Breck in together, out together, and the tactics are setting up for the final laps. We'll be back to Phoenix right after this. Yeah. Field just took the green, 173 laps. Scott Sharp took the lead when Tony Stewart came in for a splash of fuel. So did Kenny Breck. They're going to have to fight through traffic. On board with Sharp, the leader of the race. Look at Stewart there, set up behind the white car of Bozell. Well, and Kenny Breck right on top of him. Breck's all over him. Again, uh, dealing with traffic, that's what makes PIR so much fun. Breck hesitated for just a minute. There's a white and orange car, the 14 car, power team car. That is Kenny Breck. He's the one to watch for, because he's the one that's got to catch Stewart. You see the view? Blue car, Buell on the outside. A couple laps down, but making a heck of a run. I'll tell you what, if Buell hadn't gone those laps down early on, he'd still be a key factor in this race. There's a lot of fast cars out right out there right now, Paul. Billy Boat's in the middle of that uh, gaggle back there, too, in the 11 car. Jack Aroot? Well, let's check with Mike Horvath, who's the engineer. Can he go the distance? We think he can. 
We think he can. Oh, you got a mic, Jack. Plenty of room. Scott Sharp. The leader of the race. Here's Tony Stewart, second place. And right behind him is Kenny Breck, third place. Stewart is three and a half seconds back from the lead. At Phoenix International, 177 laps complete. The leader is Scott Sharp. He picked the lead up when Tony Stewart and Kenny Breck ran to the pits to get a splash of fuel. Sharp's team thinks that he can make it to the finish, but they don't sound real confident. At the same time, Stewart and Breck are trying to close and are in their own battle, just simply trying to get there. Well, there's Stewart trying to get through traffic. Uh, radio conversation says he's having trouble getting through traffic. Take a look. There's Stewart. Now Breck's got some work now. Just tell you what to expect at the Indianapolis 500. As we come up, they'll cross the line. 20 laps to go. Stewart still in pursuit of Scott Sharp. There's the leader. There's second place, Tony Stewart. So Stewart has some traffic. cars between Sharp and Stewart. There's Breck. Then you see Billy Boat. Get a glimpse of him, the 11 comes in the car from time to time. There it is. Car 12, so now we move in the behind, car 12, is behind. Closing laps of the race with Scott Sharp looking very strong but being pursued. Big change here at PIR. Mike Croft and Kenny Breck got together. Now they're working on Mike Croft's car down on the inside. There's Kenny Breck. Right side is gone. He was locked in an incredible battle with Billy Boat. In fact, it had to drive A.J. Foyt nuts that Boat and Breck were, were just hammering on one another. Well, there's now, Breck. that battle. There's Breck. Boat right behind him. Look at Boat underneath. They're splitting Buzz Calkins right here. This is the middle of turn three. This is tough to go three wide right there. Breck holds him up. Billy's right there. Now more traffic right in front of this situation. Now Breck this on point, the outside. This is Greg Waugh. Keep, He's an eye, the keep an eye on the car just ahead of Kenny Breck. That's Greg Waugh in the middle. Of, that's where they touched wheels. It took both Groff and Breck to the wall. Well, three wide in the dog leg, Paul. That isn't going to work. And they just clipped wheels and it shot them both into the wall. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure four abreast works anywhere. You can see the puff of smoke right there. That's where the tires touch. It turns Breck to the right into the outside wall, both of them. Both Groff on the right side of your screen. Now watch this hit. What's the impact there? Tries to climb that wall. Fortunately, he scrubbed off quite a bit of speed at that time. Another look, same situation. It's brought out our yellow at 186 laps. Well, you can see him two, three wide on the exit of turn two right here. That's Billy Boat down on the right side of your screen looking underneath. Brex in a sandwich right here. The sandwich is thinner. The bread's thinner than, uh, than it needed to be. They touch tires. It turns them to the right. Mike Roth came down. I assume thinking that Breck could move to his left, but he couldn't. Stefan Gregoire was there, and Billy Boat was closing in, too. Well, that was hard impact into the outside wall, Paul. I thought Breck was actually going to get it worse than... Uh, than Mike Groff, but it looked like Groff actually hit harder than Breck. They're still working at Mike Groff's car. Remember, he suffered some pretty severe injuries a year ago. And is really just coming back to full health from that. So the IRL safety team working on that car. What's that going to do when we go green? One, it's going to make it a sprint to the finish but it's also going to do some great tactical stuff. Stay tuned for World, Tues World News tonight, Sunday. It's coming up next, except on the West Coast. So we're under yellow. At PIR. The Duraloop 200 on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Duraloop Engine Treatment. Tomorrow's technology today.
Goodyear, innovators of front flat technology. Just for Men, the leader in men's hair coloring, blends away gray in five minutes. And CompuWare, people and software for business applications. Back at PIR, still under the yellow. Don't forget for those of you in the east, it's world news tonight, Sunday, and the west coast, mutual legends of golf will be coming up next. Still, though, we have a race to finish, and this incident, Tom Sneva, sets up a fascinating scenario as they continue to work on Mike Roth going to the finish. Scott Sharp is the leader. Now, under the yellow, his teammate, Mark Dismore, is lined up behind him. Not a contest in the fight, but he could be a factor in the race. Well, then there's Tony Stewart, who is second place, and then Stefan Gregoire, who is a lap down in fourth, but obviously can run fast with the leaders. Then the true third place car, Billy Boat. Well, the real key to this is we've got Sharp's teammate between him and Stewart for this victory. And, uh, you know, if I, if I was a betting man, I'd bet that... Uh, uh, that Mark is probably not going to pull over and let this guy go by unmolested. Gary? Larry Curry sits here. You're waiting patiently for the opportunity to go for the win, but you've got team cars in front of you. How big of an obstacle is Dismore in the 28? Well, Tony, you radioed me and said, send somebody down to the 28 car and ask him not to hold us up. And I said, Tony, that's Scott Sharp's teammate. I don't think we'd get much influence. <laughs> but uh, Mark Dismore is a clean racer, and... Uh, We'll let those two guys go finish it, I'm sure. Now, the pace that you've seen with 10 laps to go established by Sharp. Have you got enough muscle if you get by Dismore to make a challenge for the lead? Oh, I, I certainly think we can make a challenge for the lead. The good news is there's not a bunch of traffic. So we get by Mark Dismore, it'll be interesting here on the finish. Thanks. The bad news is going to be the length of the cleanup because uh, with the cleanup going long, as they cross into that final 10-lap barrier right now, it looks like it's several more laps for the cleanup. And they may be down to a two, three, four-lap sprint. The view high above, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, has been providing aerial pictures today. 1998 marks the 100th anniversary of Goodyear and the 73rd anniversary of the Blimp Fleet. Well, Paul, again, we've, we're going to have a good finish here. And don't forget, too, this race leads to the Indianapolis 500. And here's some of the coverage we'll have for you during the month of May. Opening day of practice on May 10th, May 16th. Pole day. Remember, it's a shortened version of Indy now. They've condensed it. Pole day is on the 16th. Final day is on the 17th. Just two days of qualifying. We'll also have quite a bit of coverage on ESPN throughout the week for you. And then, of course, May 24th, the 82nd running of the great Indianapolis 500 mile race live here on ABC. Coming up to next, next in the Eastern and Central time zone, World News Tonight Sunday, right after, or your local news. On the West Coast, it's the Liberty Mutual Legends of Golf. They've got Mike Groff out of the car here. Uh, they're trying to get his gloves off. They're trying to stabilize that neck area. Um, he is moving around, though, so that's a good sign. He's trying to get his other glove off. Uh, they got the, the left-hand glove off. He was trying to get his own right-hand glove. Those are all good signs. Uh, again, he was injured last year. And of course, the real question is Kenny Breck. Under the yellow, they're counting the laps down. Not the real question. We know he's out of the car and he's fine, but we, we hope to hear from him to see what insight he may give us to how this thing's going to run to the finish. 192 laps, eight to go. You can see they are still cleaning up. It's going to be very, very close. The pressure is very definitely on those safety crews now that the drivers are out to try and get the equipment off of the race course. It looks like they got the debris off the course. It's just a matter of getting uh, Mike's car and Mike uh, into a safe situation. I'm sure the Menard team would uh, probably actually be looking for a red flag right here until they get that problem cleaned up, but it doesn't look like they're going to get that situation. 
All right, now let's look at the lineup because that's critical. There's Scott Sharp, then Mark Dismore. Dismore's not a factor. Then you saw Tony Stewart. Then Billy Boat is third, but these other cars in here are going to make a world of difference. And the race control is saying that they believe that they are going to get going before they run out of distance at 200 laps, but it's going to be close. Well, Dismore is a factor right now. It'll be interesting to see how that's played out. Uh, you know, there's some of us have been in that situation before, but this is a teammate situation now, and uh, Dismore's down quite a few laps. It'll be real interesting to see what happens here for this first restart. Well, what would you do if you were Dismore? As a racer, you got to race, and uh, if the car's good, you drive her down in there and uh, um, see if the guy behind you is faster. Do you make it wide? No, you wouldn't want to make it wide. That would be unfair to the competition behind you. And he smiles while he says it. So we have the makings. If they can get those cars off the course and the equipment in, we have the makings of a great finish here at Phoenix International. A race that many drivers, and Tom, why, why do they say it, sets you for Indy. It tells you a great deal about your car for Indy. <coughs> well, we're not sure why that is, Paul, but if the car works here, you usually carry that on to Indianapolis. Now, aerodynamics are a lot different at Indy, but uh, the mechanical side of the suspension, the springs, sway bars, shocks, a lot of those things really carry over from this racetrack to Indianapolis. And uh, uh, that coupled with the psychological advantage and the team morale that you can bring to the month of May by having a good race here in Phoenix. Well, you can imagine the tension that they're feeling, both up in Connecticut, where Scott Sharp was born and reared, and out in California where he lives now. We know that they have the possibility of seeing a victory for this very likable young man. Well, this is a young team. The Kelly team has done a tremendous job in a short amount of time. So it's a relatively new team, but Scott Sharp, uh, been around a long time, had a tough year last year, some injuries. Uh, I'm sure there's some people thinking that he might be overdue. In fact, I heard that he's 10 months pregnant. Now, five laps to go. They now say that they're going to go green next time by. Mike Groff, the medical report is that he's awake, but he's a little groggy, and he's more responsive than he was initially. And so just to, to take the precaution, they're going to fly him out, aerovac him out to local hospital. I still don't know how they can tell when a race driver is groggy. <laughs> so Sharp, then his teammate. He's looking back at his teammate there. The question will be, what can and will Tony Stewart do? You've got to bet that Tony Stewart, who is one aggressive race driver, is going to jump all over Dismore. And Paul, one of the things you may wonder about is what about Scott Sharp in the fuel department? Well, they've gone now to full rich. They know Stewart is going to try and close. And they said, don't worry about it. we got plenty of fuel. Just go for it wide open. Did you, you see Billy Boat too? Oh, now we're listening to Sharp's radio. And Come on, 28. Actually, race control trying to get the field to bunch up nice and All right, tight. Guys, let's pack them up. Let's look good. Come on, 28. Listen to that. They're trying to help the 28 pack up. Uh, don't leave a gap. 28, let's go. Move it up, 28. <laughs> they're trying to do is talk the team into pushing Mark Dismore forward. And of course what Dismore is doing is lagging a little bit. Well, it's a real slow start right now. I can't believe how slow they're going, Paul. This this could cause some excitement right here. I mean, they're, they're almost stopped out there. I've never seen them go this slow. The pace car keeps slowing down to try to get Dismore to close the gap up. Who really got caught out there was Billy Boat. That slow restart uh, hurt Billy quite a bit. Now Sharp can taste it. Can Stewart catch him? Billy Boat is also sensing he might be able to catch Stewart. Turn three side by side. Turn four. Car eight, white flag. One mile to go for 
for Scott Sharp. One mile to go for Tony Stewart. And Billy Boat is in this fight, too. As he comes off a of turn four, he knows he has it. Stewart can't run him down, and both can't run down. Jack Scott Sharp, his second in the IRL. Tony Stewart can't run him down. Mark Dismore does his job. Stay tuned for World News tonight, Sunday, coming up next on the East Coast or your local news on the East Coast. And then on the West Coast, don't forget the Liberty Mutual Legends of Golf coming up next. Unofficial results with Scott Sharp.